Welcome to update 3.11 of the Stream Deck MIDI plugin. This is a large update with a new button type and I will split the update info into three videos. But first I want to highlight a couple of potentially breaking changes in this update. When I worked with this update I realized that the control change action has a bug. So if you use dual byte commands in the control change action, if you select one dual byte command, it would actually send the following one in the list. So if you use dual byte commands, you must have compensated for this bug and you need to review your settings. The second change is for script variable content. In previous versions, script variables could have the MIDI value range 0 to 127. This limitation is now removed, so script variables can have a slightly extended value range. You may need to review your mouth expressions, and if you need to restrict the result of a mouth expression to the MIDI value range, there is a new mouth function called range you can use to do that. The final change is a new script feature called timers. Timers use the same name convention as variables, but are prefixed with T underscore or timer underscore. So if you have variables prefixed t underscore or timer underscore, you need to rename those, otherwise they will be treated as timers and not variables. So let's have a look at the new generic MIDI button. This is a second generation button with more flexibility than the earlier buttons and to some extent it can replace the control change, the program change, note on off and script buttons. There are some things it doesn't do and I will come back to that later. The basic principle when you work with the generic MIDI button is that you first decide uh, which function the button should have. One of the button functions, VPOT, scrub, wheel or fader, or if you want to control it with a script. Then you decide which MIDI command the button should work with, and the rest of the editor page depends on what you have selected in these two dropdowns. In this video I will talk about the button functions. I will do a second video for the VPOT and fader functions and a third video for scripting. When we look at the button types, you will see that the available options in the editor is very much like the older buttons. One new feature is that these dropdowns are searchable, so either you can select an entry in the dropdown or start typing to narrow down the dropdown. If we, for instance, work with notes, you can start to type the note you want to use and select it in the dropdown or simply type the full note name and press enter. For some MIDI command types, you can select if you want to use the same control for the on and off value, or use separate controls for the on and off value. The hold button has a feature for how to show the state when the button is pressed. The button has a state 0 icon and a state 1 icon. The default action is to show a minimized version of the state 0 icon when the button is pressed. But if you want it to show the state 1 icon while it is pressed, you can check the checkbox. The latch buttons work exactly like the latch function in the note on off button, but this latch button can use any MIDI command and you can mix and match MIDI commands in the same latch group if you like. 
It is the same latch groups as used for the older note on off button and you can mix and match with those buttons as well. I have three latch buttons here. I have one for the control change action, one for pitch bend and one is the older note on off buttons and they work like that. Finally, cycle buttons work as the older buttons, but again you can use any MIDI command for the cycle file. If you have a MIDI command type like the control change that has a control and a value in the command, the values in the cycle file will control the value in the command. If you select, for instance, pitch bend or program change that doesn't have values, the values in the cycle file will control the program change commands. As I mentioned, there are some things that the generic MIDI button doesn't do that the older buttons do. It doesn't send chords, so if you need to send chords from a button, you need to use the older note on off button or do it with a script. I will not implement that function in the new generic media button. It also doesn't read Cubase expression maps or logic articulation sets, and it doesn't read custom option files for the drop downs. Please let me know if you think this is a showstopper. That's all for this video about the button functions. Don't forget the other videos for the parts and faders and scripts. Thanks for watching.